The Santa Claus is the heartwarming family tale of Tim Allen murdering Santa Claus in front of his child, putting on the dead man's clothes, driving off with his ride, and then finally stealing the deceased identity. This is all considered totally fine and even encouraged from a legal standpoint because that's just how the Santa Claus game works, I guess. Try to understand this! And initially it seems like a pretty good deal. Tim Allen gets magical powers, an unlimited supply of milk and cookies, and seemingly isn't even haunted by the former Santa's vengeful ghost. No! All Tim has to do in return is work a single night each year. But actually, being Santa in the Santa Claus movies would be endless torture. And I can prove it with math. Yuletide math! Something's wrong with the scale! In 1994, the year the Santa Claus and Ronald Reagan's Alzheimer's were released, there were around 5.7 billion people on Earth. Of those, approximately 23% were children, making a worldwide total of about 1.3 billion present eligible monsters. However, we know that not every kid makes the nice list, and what little the movie shows us suggests two-thirds of kids are good, assuming Veronica isn't a real tally for anything other than an eventual notch in Santa's bedpost. Veronica, very nice. That leaves us with 870 74 million kids. But also, not every kid celebrates Christmas because not every kid is raised in a Christian household nor worships the god of consumerism. Christians have made up about one third of the world's population for the past 100 years, so that drops us to about 291 million kids. But in 1990s America, 85% of Americans identified as Christians, but 96% claim to still celebrate Christmas. So we'll add back an additional 11% to our total, meaning if we assume all Christians in the world celebrate Christmas, and we assume 96 million non-believing, dirty, liberal children across the world will celebrate the happy holidays as well, we're left with 387 million worthy children. Now, I'm tempted to say adults could receive presents as well, since that's exactly what happens in both the Santa Claus 1 and 2, but the first instance was just a one-off to prove he was real to Tim's ex-wife and her husband, and the second was a successful attempt to one-horse open sleigh and pussy. So unless Santa's betting millions of women a year, those types of gifts shouldn't move the needle too much statistically. In your dreams, playboy. Mm -hmm. But now, here's where the math gets really wild. The global average fertility rate is just below 2.5 children per woman, so let's assume that's the average number of kids per household. We'll also assume all naughty kids live together in godforsaken households Santa can avoid entirely, which means 155 million households are in need of joy deliveries. If each household requires an average of five minutes for travel and delivery, which feels like an underestimate, but Santa's probably pretty efficient at this point, his yearly deliveries take 775 million minutes or 1,474 years. Thank God Santa can literally stop the flow of time. But don't forget, barring immortality, Tim Allen is just an average human being. He doesn't have any special physiology or mental powers to withstand the passage of time as he slides down chimneys and leaves Pokemon cards for ungrateful kids, he experiences all 1,474 of those years in real time. Even worse, it's not like he can just pop into a Denny's since their cooks are also frozen in time and basically everywhere else would be closed that late on Christmas Eve, and Tim clearly can't cook for himself and regardless probably doesn't want to waste any more time than he has to, which means Santa's entire diet is basically going to consist exclusively of cookies and milk for more than a millennium. Even if he gets small nutrient boosts in other countries like the UK where they'll maybe leave him some mince pie, his stint through a America alone will take 147 years, meaning that for a century and a half, assuming he drinks a 16 ounce glass of milk and one cookie per house, he'll consume virtually nothing but 2 million gallons of milk and well over 15 million cookies. I think the milk's a little sour. It'll only take four weeks before Santa's lack of vitamin C leads to scurvy and all of the literal bleeding from the skin that brings, while the endless sugar rots away his teeth, the bloody gums, and his front butt infinitely expand. Oh, and don't forget, this entire trip happens exclusively under cover of night, meaning Santa won't have seen the sun for over a thousand years, leading to severe vitamin D deficiencies, prostate cancer, memory loss, and an increased risk for developing dementia, schizophrenia, and depression, obviously. <laughs> And even if his body is magically protected from serious physical disease, imagine how much you would just loathe this limited diet after millions of meals choking down sugary treats alone in the cold, frozen darkness. It won't be long before Santa seriously considers butchering Rudolph for some protein. <laughs> this whole thing isn't a job. This is Tim Allen's punishment for murdering Santa. Of course, that implies Tim Allen actually murdered Santa, but I'm not so sure. Is it possible Santa faked his death? Remember, the titular Santa Claus states that whoever puts on Santa's suit, quote, fully accepts the duties and responsibilities of Santa Claus in perpetuity until such time that the wearer becomes unable to do so, either by accident or design. 
Adding the word design leaves open the possibility Santa orchestrated his little accident. That would explain why when Tim Allen spots Santa on the roof, he isn't dragging his magic sack through the snow, and also why Tim Allen ran into a such a ladder despite Santa having literally zero need for a ladder. Huh? He had no intention of delivering presents. He was purposefully making a ruckus in order to get noticed, fall, stage his own death, and have the sucker who spotted him take his place. Even that fall is questionable as hell. He slides off the roof and lands flat on his back in a giant snow pile like a Hollywood stuntman. And yeah, sure, he magically disappears, kind of like Obi-Wan taking a lightsaber to the dick. No! But Santa is literally magic, meaning he doesn't have to be dead to teleport, and that's without even accounting for his whole host of magic elves with attitude at his disposal. And speaking of elves, this would also explain why none of them seemed too worried their boss was murdered, and why Bernard just mostly seems annoyed that he has to explain shit to his new overlord. The old Santa was probably losing his mind after too many eternities spent sucking down reindeer farts over the frozen Pacific Ocean. Santa probably gave the elves an ultimatum. Free me from this endless torture, or I'll go on strike. I'll refuse to deliver presents, or I'll only give children the last airbender on Blu-ray. Ho, ho, ho. The elves had no choice but to devise a plan to trick some new schmuck into taking on the gig. Old Saint Dick isn't dead. He's chilling in South America somewhere, juggling seven martinis on his rosy gut. I don't even wear pajamas. Normally I sleep naked. Fuck naked. The weirdest element of this is probably how hard Tim Allen fights to hold on to the job in Santa Claus 3. You'd think he'd be happy for Nick Frost to take over even if he does a sh job. The only explanation for it has to be that Tim Allen's brain has freaking fried into eggnog mush. That's probably why head elf Bernard has left by Santa Claus 3. He finally found a Santa he could break down into a warped, subservient shell of a man once and for all. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Obviously, there's the aforementioned Japanese tidal wave created by Moose. Moose. <laughs> hey, it's me, Moose Almighty, the third movie in this franchise. <laughs> God is really tired, okay? Just give it to a moose. I don't even care. <laughs> Oh my god, he's screwing up so bad. A moose is a terrible god. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> he didn't really do much. He just killed all of the bears. And, like, he turned the whole forest into berries. That's all low leafy growth. Okay.